Each track in Pro Tools has several track views that allow you to edit changes in your audio or MIDI over time. Although you can edit your MIDI recordings in the edit window by moving through the different track views, it is much easier to do detailed MIDI editing in the MIDI editor. The MIDI editor has two locations. It can either be docked at the bottom of the edit window or it can be its own separate window. To access the MIDI editor docked in the edit window, you can click on the MIDI editor show and hide icon in the bottom left of the edit window. You can also double click the divider at the bottom of the edit window. If the docked MIDI editor was last used, then double clicking any MIDI clip will also open the docked MIDI editor. To access the MIDI editor in its own window, you can go Window, MIDI Editor. The hotkey for this is Control equals on a Mac or Start equals on Windows. Also, if the separate MIDI editor window was last used, then double clicking a MIDI clip will also open the MIDI editor in its own window. The MIDI editor toolbar is customizable. You can choose to expand the edit tools display, expand the grid and nudge display, and show whether you want to show the selection display. You can also rearrange the toolbar by holding down Command on a Mac or Control on a Windows machine and clicking and dragging the different sections. The top left corner of the MIDI window gives you a solo and a mute button. These buttons will solo and mute all of the MIDI tracks that are currently showing in the editor. The next button, Notation View, can turn the MIDI notes into a notation view. The next set of buttons are the edit tools. These work similarly to the edit tools found in the edit window. Each MIDI editor may have its own separate MIDI tool selected independent of the edit window settings. Let's briefly see how the edit tools work in the MIDI editor. Since keyboard focus will automatically turn on for the MIDI editor once you begin working in it, the same hotkeys apply for the same edit tools as in the edit window. The zoom tool lets you zoom in on notes. The trimmer tool lets you trim the length of notes. The selection tool lets you select notes which you can edit, delete, copy, cut, or paste to other places. The grabber tool lets you click and drag notes, and if you hold down Option on a Mac, which is Alt on Windows, and drag, it will copy the note to a new position. If you hold down Shift as you drag, the note will be constrained either horizontally or vertically, depending which direction you drag first. The Smart tool combines all three tools together in one. The Scrub tool lets you scrub the notes. And the Pencil tool lets you draw in notes, changes in automation and MIDI controls, and also changes in the tempo ruler. Here are a few other things you can do with the edit tools in the MIDI editor that are unique from the edit window. When the Smart tool or Grabber tool are selected, you can add notes by double-clicking and dragging within the editor. You can also delete notes by double-clicking. Behavior of the notes being drawn can vary depending on whether the pencil tool is the freehand tool or one of the other tools. Velocity refers to the level of each individual note. You can adjust the velocities in this window by holding down Command on a Mac or Control on Windows and clicking on the note and dragging up and down. You can also select notes within this window by clicking the piano keys to select a note across the tracks being displayed, or by clicking and dragging to select multiple notes across the displayed tracks. The next control is the Track Edit Selector. This drop-down list allows you to select the track that you currently want to be making changes to. It is also reflected in the tracks list with a little pencil indicator. The default note duration and default note velocity indicates what value any added notes created will follow. 
you may choose to use the option to follow grid. And this means that the length of the notes you create by double clicking will follow your grid settings. When play MIDI notes while editing is on, you will hear the notes playback as you add, select, and grab them. When it is off, you will not hear the notes playback while editing them. These next two buttons, Mirrored MIDI Editing and Link Timeline and Edit Selection, are linked to the global settings in the edit window. Mirrored MIDI Editing will be explained in a future video. Until you know what it does, you should have it turned off. The Link Timeline and Edit Selection is explained in my earlier video about edit tools. There is also an Edit Modes section in each MIDI editor that is completely independent of the edit window and other MIDI editors. The grid selector works the same way that they work in the edit window and have been explained in my earlier video about edit modes. This control is also independent of the edit window settings. The nudge selector lets you choose a value that will apply to nudging notes forward and backward in the timeline. To nudge a note, Select it and then press the plus button to nudge the note to the right and the minus button to move the note to the left. The cursor location display gives you time and note information for wherever your cursor currently is located. The edit selection display gives you the time values of the beginning and end of your selection. It also allows you to click on single or multiple notes and then transpose them or change the velocity by typing in a number in the corresponding display. The target in the top right corner gives you the ability to link the timeline and track selections between the MIDI editor and the edit window. You can have multiple MIDI editors one way to create another MIDI editor is to uncheck the target button and then open a MIDI editor. Only one MIDI editor can be targeted at a time. The final drop down menu in the top right corner gives you two new options different from the other menus we have already talked about. First, it gives you the option to show and hide the tracks list. Second, it allows you to choose how you would like this specific MIDI editor to scroll. The tracks list lets you show and hide tracks by clicking the dots to the left of the list of the tracks. You can also click and drag across multiple tracks. Selecting tracks for copying and pasting is another important feature of the tracks list. This list also shows you the track color, track type, name, and which tracks are currently being edited. It is possible to edit multiple tracks at a time by holding down shift and clicking to the right of each track in the tracks list. The drop down on the top right of this window also lets you reorder tracks. The group section at the bottom left corner will be covered in another video about groups, but having this window gives easy access to group settings. The time base and conductor rulers can be adjusted with the ruler selector here. These options are similar to the ones that are found in the edit window. Once again, these settings are independent of the settings you have in the edit window. These two buttons deal with color coding MIDI notes. If neither of the buttons are pressed, then the notes will follow the color of the MIDI clips in the edit window. They will also be shaded according to their velocity. Darker colors means higher velocity. The first button will temporarily assign the notes of each track to one of 16 fixed colors. The second button will color all of the notes a red color and will display their velocity by how dark the red color is. The darker the red, the higher the velocity. You can view multiple lanes at the bottom of the MIDI editor. These lanes display information regarding velocity, controller data, 
as well as audio volume, pan, mute, and etc. You can show and hide the lanes by clicking this drop-down triangle here. You can add additional lanes to view by pressing the plus and minus buttons, and you can change the information that is being viewed on each lane with the drop-down menu here.